G'day, I'm Paul. So Skoda has made a big change to this. It's the Skoda Kodiak RS. What is the big change? Well, if you watched our last review of this, it was a diesel. And I kind of complained that the rest of the car was great, but it just didn't really feel like a diesel suited it. Now it uses the engine from the Golf GTI. So the price for this is just under $75,000 drive away. But if that's too expensive, the whole range kicks off at a little over 50 grand for different engine variants. Now this kind of, it's, it's in a weird set. It doesn't really have competitors per se, because this is the sporty version of the Kodiak SUV. But if you look at it in terms of size, it's things like Santa Fe, uh, Sorento CX-9. It's that size of vehicle. It has seven seats and that's why it competes with those things. Now, you may have noticed it is wet at the moment and it's going to be raining throughout the day. So we're going to film some of this stuff indoors. So it'll look a little bit different to usual, but still give you the same level of detail and content. So today we're going to do a detailed review of this. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon because that way you're going to find out every single time we review SUVs like this. Let's talk exterior design. So you've got seven colors to pick from. All but gray is an additional circa 800 bucks. There is a red that is a little over $1,000 as well. I love this blue. It's kind of, I don't know, to me, it's kind of synonymous with Kodiak RS and it suits this car perfectly. It's a, yeah, it's just a really nice car, especially under these lights here. Have a look at this front. So this has had a bit of a design evolution, uh, kind of like the way that the Octavia went through a design evolution with those weird sort of segmented headlights. This has kind of evolved over time and I think they've landed on the right design here. So big bold grille at the front here, piano black, you've got a radar built into there. Skoda logo up the top. Works better with slimline plates. I have seen one of these before with a big registration plate and it just eats up all of this lower air dam space. This looks very good. RS. Now, this is interesting because some people call it the VRS, some people just call it the Kodiak RS. So it is fascinating that there is that V there, but it's just like an optional thing to call the car. So let me know in the comment section below, what do you call this? Do you call this the VRS or just the Kodiak RS? I'm keen for your feedback. Over here, you have a set of Matrix LED headlights. These look fantastic. And you'll see here that there is two sets of headlights. You've got this section up the top and then this section down the bottom as well. And depending on what you have selected, they will light up individually there as required. A little bit of an air pocket here that pops out to the side. Then around the side here, we have a set of 20 inch alloy wheels. Now, what do you reckon about this design? These have aero caps inside them. Uh, these pop out so you can just get a clean wheel design with that machined finish on the outside and the piano black on the inside. Even though it kind of looks cool with the aero caps, it is kind of lost on the fact that you have red brake calipers behind there. So you don't really see them when the aero caps are in place. But um, yeah, it's just something different. And I think it gives this car a little bit of character. In terms of our profile there, 45 profile on the wheels, I'm hoping it actually rides well. Uh, this is a sporty vehicle, but you don't want it to be too crazy in terms of how it feels. Tiguan R, for example, was just a little bit rough in terms of day-to-day -day driving. This, on the other hand, I'm hoping has a lighter touch to it. Wheel arch guard just here as well in black offsetting the body color. Up the top here, you have black colored mirror caps. You have an indicator built into there as well. And then a camera here for the 360 camera. Things are gonna get a little bit confusing because there are semiconductor shortages at the moment. And this vehicle comes in a number of different configurations depending on when you order it. So I'll explain as much of that as I can a little bit later on. Piano black roof rails here. You get a panoramic roof on this one privacy glass and then come around to the back. Around the back here you'll find full LED tail lights. These look great with that frosted segment on the outer edge, that VRS badge with four by four. And you have Skoda up the top there and Kodiak here. Shark fin aerial and then you get a black spoiler here as well. I love as well here on the reverse camera, you have a little jet here to wash it. So if you do get debris and all that sort of stuff building up on it, this little jet will shoot that clean. You get a set of dual exhaust pipes here. Are they both real? Yes and yes. Good news, but there is fake noise plumbed into the cabin. We'll have a listen to that later on. Let me know in the comments section below, what do you think about the Kodiak RS design? And what do you think about the price? It is a lot of money to pay. Give me your feedback down there in the comments section. So we are inside the Kodiak. Let's start off with the key. Here it is. You've got lock, boot, 
unlock, a little bit of chrome up the top there. And then on the back, you have the Skoda logo. This is a proximity sensing key. So you leave that in your pocket. Then once you're inside, you have a push button start here on the steering wheel. Now, what do we think about the design? Um, Look, I, I quite like the way that this looks. I think it looks a little bit more premium than something like a Tiguan. So you can see here, they've got these nice materials along the top of the dashboard, the red stitching, uh, that infotainment system integrated nicely. But unfortunately, there is a stack of piano black around here. It's kind of all over the place, but um, like I said, it's something you have to just kind of deal with. Um, given the price tag of this car, I'm keen to know what you guys think. Do you think this looks premium enough for a you know, $75,000 price tag? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, what about your touch point? So this is nice and soft and a little firm there on the door. How soft are they? Well, we've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to other cars that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description build quality that all feels really nice and solid typically with skoda's i find that they are built like tanks and yeah that sounds fantastic as well moving on to infotainment so skoda uses this it is a 9.2 inch infotainment system it has a color touchscreen, and then you also have shortcut buttons on the side it also has a proximity sensor so as you bring your finger closer to the screen you can see those additional context menus appear and then you have gesture control so watch this i can swipe over there and as you can see it um sometimes works. Um, so this infotainment system is great because not only is it easy to use, it's nice and fast, but also comes with the latest smartphone mirroring technology. So in here you have AM, FM and DAB digital radio. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing. That's all sent through a 12 speaker Canton branded sound system. The sound system is great. We've got it in this car here, but because of the semiconductor shortages, there are a number of features that are missing from uh, future orders that will come back at some point and one of them is this sound system there are some safety features that are missing as well so please make sure you just do a little bit of research with your dealer first to make sure you're actually getting all of the features that we're going to talk about today um, so outside of the sound system smartphone mirroring comes in the form of apple carplay and android auto apple carplay is wireless so i'll show you what that looks like there it is there. It is big integration, very nice and snappy. No dramas there at all. I'll show you what Android Auto looks like. So again, full screen integration, nice and quick and sharp as well. So double thumbs up from me. Ahead of the driver, you have another digital display. This is again, a high quality and fast screen and you can change the views there as well to tailor it for whatever you need. So that is all very straightforward. And I love the fact that all this stuff comes standard, which I guess you'd kind of expect for this price tag. Let's talk about safety. So this comes standard with AEB, Autonomous Emergency Braking, uh, which is the tech that stops the car. If you don't, it also has radar cruise control, but there is an issue here with parts shortages again, and the things that are missing as part of those parts shortages are blind spot monitoring, which would normally be on the wing mirror, a lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant, rear cross traffic alert, and then a 360 camera. Now, this stuff confusingly is included here on the car that we're driving, but if you order one today, it likely won't have that stuff, but you will get a discount because it doesn't have that stuff. So I know, a little bit confusing, but yeah, I'm trying to explain it as best as I can. Uh, so let me show you what the reverse view camera looks like, keeping in mind this has a 360 camera with front and rear parking sensors. I'll show you what that looks like. So there it is there. So 360 camera on the left, and then you have your reverse view camera on the right. The quality of the reverse view camera isn't too bad, but as you can see, that uh, 360 camera is kind of pointless. You can't I guess you can see the lines, but it's just not very detailed. This does have a semi-autonomous parking feature though, so that's gonna come in handy if you're not too confident with parallel parking. Now, moving on to practicality, and we'll start off with your connectivity options. So down here, you've got two USB-C ports and a 12 volt outlet. You have a wireless phone charger down here. My phone is currently charging on. So you can store your phone down there if you want to, or you can slap it down here. The good thing about this is, so this goes forwards and backwards, but you can, Lift that out of the way for a sec. This actually turns around, so you can use it as a, I don't know, a, a rest of some sort or a cup holder, whatever you sort of so desire, but that means you do have plenty of storage down the center there. What about your coffee cup? Well, I have good news. This morning I had my coffee, drove here, and it fit in there fine, no dramas. Uh, bottle fits in there as well without any issues. What about our big bottle? We'll give that a shot. 
No, it doesn't fit into there, but I suspect it fits into the door. Yeah, it fits into the door nicely. The door pockets also have a carpet on them, which is nice and premium. You also have a little bin inside the door there as well. And I love the fact that within the door, you have an umbrella and you also have these little protectors to stop your door hitting things when your kids rush out of the car. Uh, down here next to the driver's knee, you've got a little storage nook for keys and coins and that kind of thing. Then we have two sets of glove boxes. So one down here, kind of small, not really a huge amount of room there, but it is air conditioned. You get one up the top there as well, plenty of room in there. So you do have stacks of storage options here. If you do need to put your stuff somewhere. Let's talk about your comfort features. So you have dual zone automatic climate control up the front here, plus an additional zone for your second and third rows. You have heated and cooled seats. In addition to that, you also have full electric seat adjustment for the driver and front passenger. In terms of the adjustments, you can go forwards, backwards. Your backrest can go forwards, backwards. You can lift the base of the seat up and down. You can also adjust your bolster as well. You also have seat memory as well. What about the seats? Have a look at them. They look so cool. I think Skoda's seat game is really strong. So you've got that VRS logo just here, that diamond quilted pattern. You've got the perforations there for the cooling and then the, um, the sort of faux carbon inlay type things just there with the red stitching. So yeah, really cool seat setup. And I love the fact that you have so much adjustment, including this front section here as well. So they certainly have built this for a very spirited drive. And then on the steering front, this has both tilt and reach adjustment. It's entirely manual. Uh, the steering wheel is pretty cool. So it sits sort of bulky in the hands. You've got easy access to the paddle shifters and a bit of a flat bottom there as well. And on the reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Second row of the Kodiak. What is this like? So look, knee room is actually not bad. Toe room is excellent and headroom is pretty good despite this um, giant panoramic roof. Um, yeah, it's actually not a bad place to be seated. You do have further adjustments on the seats as well. If you do want more or less room, you can go forwards and backwards and then you can also adjust your backrest too should you desire. Map pockets in the back of the seats. This is where your third zone of climate control is. Down here you've got a 12 volt outlet, a couple of air vents here, isofix points on these two outboard seats. Then you have center armrest here with a cup holder or three of them. Um, that fits in there, that fits in there. Then you have a little piccolo holder. Um, inside the door you could fit a bottle easily and that carpeted finish continues there. I'm a little bit disappointed by this though. Have a listen. It's all just hard plastics. Um, up the front there, it's all soft plastic. So yeah, it would have been nice to just maybe make this a little more premium, especially given the price tag. These seats, they carry the same design as the front, which I really like. So you've got that diamond quilting just there. They're also heated as well, which means you can stay warm if you're relegated to the second row. Um, you've got these manual blinds here to you know, conceal your VIP children. And then what about our window? Does it go all the way down? It's got auto down. Look at that, good job, Skoda. Now let's talk third row. Like a lot of SUVs in this segment, the third row isn't huge. It's not really built for adults, but I wanna show you what it's like with an adult in there. So you have a couple of options of getting in. You can either drop this down and then climb over, or alternatively, you can slide this forward and then climb in. Let's give this a shot. Okay, so there we are. I'll slide this backwards now. Okay, so with this in its standard position, it's impossible for me to lock that in. So I've got to bring that forward a touch and lock that into there. So you can see here, I'm pretty squeezed up. Yes, I do like my KFC, so I'm probably bigger than a standard adult, but uh, yeah, ultimately my knees are well and truly wedged into there. I don't have really a great deal of headroom, but look, if I was to be in this row just for a short trip, it'd be kind of okay. Uh, you've got a couple of storage nooks off to either side. Uh, but that is about it. There is no top tether here for these seats or any ISO fix either. So you won't have any baby seats in here. Uh, Sean, can you get a shot of how much leg room there is there? Just so you can get an idea of what you're left with as a passenger. Let's check out the boot. So let's see what you have available. We'll crack that power tailgate open. Hey, that's actually not too bad. So normally you don't get much room here behind the third row, but this is just under 300 litres of capacity. Have a look at this. Being Skoda, 
you get fun little things. So when you're out doing Skoda related things, you've got a blanket here to keep you warm, which is, um, which is nice. I'll get this out of the way and I'll show you the rest of this boot. So under here you have storage. So you can put your cargo blind there. These things, which I've never really understood, apparently these go under your feet in the passenger side, like in the second row. Um, you've got a jack under here. This is where your space saver spare lives. Also where you'll find that big old subwoofer. I like this as well. It's a good little storage nook for that while you're getting a spare tire out or something like that. Get that out of the way. Uh, over on this side, you have space for a first aid kit if required. Same story over on this side. That pops out of the way if you do need it. Hooks over on the side here. You have a 12 volt outlet as well. Get this out of the way. In fact, let's just try and fit our bags in here first, just to give you an idea of how much room there actually is. Excellent, so that will fit a medium sized suitcase, which is awesome. Okay, let's drop that third row out of the way. A little bit tricky to do. There you go, once that is done, you have over 600 litres of space available, which is really good. And then if you do want more space, you can just drop the second row by pulling these tabs and that expands the space to over 2,000 litres. So I've just hit the road in the Kodiak RS uh, engine. So I said before, it sounds familiar because this is uh, virtually the engine out of the Golf GTI. So it's a two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine, makes 180 kilowatts of power and 370 newton meters of torque. And that's all mated to a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Now, I know what you're thinking, the Golf GTI is a much smaller car than this, and you would be right. So obviously this is hauling a lot more weight than a Golf GTI, and that means it's gonna to need to work a little bit harder. Uh, we'll see whether that actually results in it performing well on the road. Uh, we have had a small break in the rain here, but the road is still incredibly wet. So uh, when we do pick up the speed a little bit, um, it's gonna be a little sketchy, but we will see how it goes. So what is it like just driving in your standard drive mode? And let's actually have a look at this gearbox. I'm just curious to see what it's like at low speeds here. We've got a stop start system. It's very smooth the way that kicks on. Yeah, the gearbox is not too bad. It's actually probably one of the better uh, dual clutches I've had recently. Uh, so that actually drives okay. And we'll lay the sliver in. Yeah, it takes a little, little while to get moving just in this standard uh, sort of normal drive mode, but you can flick this down to go into sport mode and that immediately gives you more response. Um, you will notice a whole lot of noise inside the cabin. That is all fake and you know, it's a, a little bit frustrating if I'm honest because the only way to switch it off is to set up your individual drive setting and turn the sound off. So if I go to that now and then do the same throttle application, it's almost dead silent in comparison in the cabin. Now, while we're on drive modes, let's have a look at what we've got here. So we have eco, comfort, normal, sport, individual, snow. <laughs> There's a fair bit there to choose from. Then in addition to that, you can also configure your stability control to either have traction off or you can have it in ESC sport mode where it gives you just a little bit more slip before the nannies kick in. Skoda claims a combined fuel economy of around seven and a half litres per 100 k's. We are currently sitting on 10.7 on our long-term cycle. So near enough, we have been having a little bit of fun out here in the rain. So that figure has crept up, but you should expect to see that figure if you are doing more highway driving. This is a really efficient engine out of the box. And just on the fuel economy, keep in mind, you're gonna need 95 Ron premium unleaded fuel. There is also an off-road driving mode, so that'll simply tailor your stability controls and traction control systems for off-road driving. Keep in mind, ground clearance of a little under 200 mil, you're not really going to be doing any off-road driving. Now, what's it like on our sine waves? We'll crank up the speed to the legal highway speed here in Australia, which is a max of 130. And we'll see how it performs. Alrighty, here we go. It's actually really good. Very nice. So this uses an adaptive damping setup and yeah, look, the ride's actually really good. So that adaptive damping setup can give you comfort in comfort mode. And then when you dial it up to sport mode, it becomes you know, firmer as it goes. And the way that they've tuned it means that even with these big wheels, it still feels nice and comfortable over corrugations, speed humps and the type of thing you see around the city. So yeah, really impressed with that setup. 
Okay, let's put this into sport mode. It's going to get loud in the cabin even though stuff isn't really happening. Um, so it automatically puts the gearbox into sport mode as well. So I mentioned that it is wet out here, so this isn't going to be the most exciting. Whoop, as we understeer a little bit there. Yeah, this road surface here at the Proving Ground is deliberately designed to be low friction in parts and that uh, first corner is low friction. But as we get up here to the faster corner, I'll give this a punch through here. Yeah, right up. It's actually moving along quite nicely. Yeah, very nice. So it sits nice and flat as well on these faster sweepers. The whole uh, body just stays nice and level and the suspension isn't so firm that it's rattling my teeth out. It is just really, uh, it firms it up, but not over the top. Same with the steering, it's added weight to it, but it hasn't gone too crazy with it. Another fast sweeper coming up here. It's actually really impressive. So this is a front wheel drive bias system. And even now when it is quite damp outside, it's giving us more than enough feedback through the wheel. And as I ride the throttle out of this faster corner, it doesn't have a great sense of understeer. Just pick it up a fair bit of speed here, despite us carrying that extra weight over the Golf GTI. Actually hoofs along nicely. There you go, pretty surprised by that. Um, this is definitely much more engaging than the diesel. So the diesel still had that punchy torque hit, but this really gives you a big old sort of push in the back when you get on the throttle. It's nothing outrageous, and it's certainly nowhere near as uh, sort of hair raising as the Tiguan are. And by the way, you can watch our review of that by clicking up here. But it is still pretty exciting to think that this is a seven seater that you're gonna have your family in. It's done a good job with this. Skoda claims a zero to 100 time of just under seven seconds. This is how it went up against our stopwatch. Let's talk visibility. So clear visibility down the front there, big old wing mirrors with blind spot monitoring, unless you're affected by semiconductors. Visibility out the back is okay, but it's a really narrow envelope, so you can't see too much. Planning on towing? Well, you've got a 2,000 kilogram brake towing capacity, which is pretty reasonable for an SUV in this segment. So the Kodiak RS, let me know what you think about this now that it is a petrol. Look, for me, I think it's a huge improvement over the diesel. The diesel was fine, but it just wasn't really all that engaging. This is very engaging and very fun to drive. It's not as crazy or as raucous as the Tiguan R. So if you do want a proper all out sports SUV, but perhaps don't need seven seats, the Tiguan R is the one you want to go for. But if you do need seven seats and something to uh, get your heart racing and uh, you know get you awake when the kids are annoying you um, this could be the answer it is 75 grand though which is a lot of money and at the moment with all the semiconductor shortages there's a lot of parts missing as well so i don't know how i feel about that but let me know in the comments section below have you bought one of these or are you a current diesel kodiak rs owner i'm keen for your feedback if you did enjoy this video please make sure you like it you share it with your mates and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon until next time though, take it easy.